I have taught a lot of classes in fundraising and nonprofit marketing in my career and the number one question I get asked is how do you ask for donations? And I admit it's tough. You're sitting there face to face with a donor who you've built a relationship with and now you have to ask them for money and in most cases a lot of money. So having said that, our focus today is on major gifts, but the principles we will cover apply to all kinds of asks, from emails to events. I put timestamps in the description below because we're going to cover a lot of ground, like knowing your prospect, knowing your case, knowing your role, knowing the specific techniques, and knowing what to do next. I also have a really cool download for you, so stick around, hit the subscribe and the like, and let's get started. Step one is knowing your prospect. The first step always begins with good prospect research. For anyone who is new to fundraising, prospect research is just that, researching your potential donor. We start with something called the LIA rating, and forgive me if you're a seasoned fundraiser and know this, but this is for our newbies. LIA is your potential donor's linkage to your organization, their interest in your agency or the work you do, and their ability to give. If the prospect has a great LIA rating, we call this a qualified prospect. Then we do a deeper dive for detailed information on them, such as determining what are their pain points, their motivations for giving, what are they passionate about, who are they as a person, and what is the right amount to ask for based on their giving history, capabilities, and priorities. Nowadays, social media and the internet have made prospect research so much easier than when I started. I'm probably going to actually do another video in the future specifically on prospect research, so make sure to subscribe and please leave a comment too as it really helps our channel to reach budding young fundraising professionals to help them answer the questions they might have. Now after we have our research completed, we need to begin the cultivation process. Again, for new fundraisers, cultivation is the process of gradually developing the prospect's interest and involvement in our organization. You don't ask someone to marry you on the first date and fundraising is the same. Cultivation also helps us build a better understanding of the person or group and nurture that relationship to the point where we are comfortable to make a major gift ask. Now, on a side note, I'm using a lot of terms that are very fundraising. That download that I mentioned is in the description, and it's a glossary of fundraising terms from CFRE International, and a quick plug for CFRE. Um, there, it stands for Certified Fundraising Executive, and that's the professional designation for fundraisers, and they have great resources for nonprofits and for fundraisers. I'm a CFRE, and I credit them for a large part of my success in my career. Step two is knowing your case. This goes without saying, but I'm assuming you have a vast understanding of your organization's missions, values, and history. As well, I assume that you have a thorough understanding of the campaign that you are requesting funds for. Some important stats behind it, how it's gonna make an impact, how you'll be reporting back to the donor and stewarding them. And the more confidence you have and the more understanding you have in your case and your agency, the better you can present it. You will also want to drill all of this information down into an elevator pitch. Not only do we want to present the full case statement but with the specific details, but we also want to be able to deliver our message in a concise, succinct way, which we're going to cover when we get to actually asking for the money. Now, there's a lot of information out there on creating a case, but here are some tips when creating your summary or your elevator pitch. First, start with the need in a few words. Identify the person, cause, or group that's in need of assistance. Use strong emotional phrasing to describe the need and paint a powerful picture while using just a few words. And then next, present your ask. What are you asking them to do? Then add the because, explain the impact of their gift, and finally sum it up with how their donation will make a difference. So here's an example. Our family foundation just made its annual donation to a domestic violence shelter that supports men escaping violence. And I had to bring this charity forward um, to make the pitch with the family. And here's how I presented it in only a few words to get the entire family on board. I mentioned about how we have done our sons a huge disservice by only teaching them not to hit women. I never spoke to my son about what happens if he was abused. Worse yet, what if he needed to escape intimate partner violence? 
Wheatland Shelter needs our support with our donation because they are the only agency in our community where he could go for help. This donation is going to provide a bed for someone who has nowhere else to go and may even save a life. Step three is knowing your role. Whether you're a professional fundraiser, a board member, an executive director, or a volunteer, if you have done your research and know your prospect, know your organization, and know your case, it is still about having the right person, ask the right person, at the right time, for the right project, in the right way, for the right amount. And typically, a major gift ask is done as pairs. So you can have your executive director with your board member or a volunteer with your fundraiser or volunteer with your executive director. The important thing is that each person be aware of their role during the meeting. You need to make sure that not only you, but your partner knows, has the same understanding of the organization, the prospect, and your ask. So make sure to go in with a plan and you can even practice before the meeting. Now the good stuff. Step four is knowing how to ask. And setting the stage is very important. Face-to-face -face is always the best. And the meeting should be in an environment where you will not be interrupted. So such as your prospect's office or on-site at your agency. A restaurant or coffee shop just has too many distractions. And there are six steps to a model solicitation. And I had to learn these when studying for my CFRE. They are, one, build a rapport. Sit back, relax, engage in friendly chit chat about things that your donor is interested in. And remember, you learned that when you did your prospect research. Two, state your case with sincerity and enthusiasm while focusing on the need, the impact, and the outcomes. Three, encourage involvement. Ask their opinion, ask for their help, ask for what you need. Four, summarize the benefits and impacts of their support and close. So this is where the elevator pitch, specifically asking for your gift, is important. Five, be quiet. Sit back, relax, let them respond, even if it takes a while. And six, respond appropriately and answer any questions or speak to any objections. Step five is knowing what to do next. So let's talk about the possible responses and what to do. If yes, confirm what they have committed, thank them, repeat it back to them, and let them know what the next steps are. If the answer is no, find out more about why they objected. Is it timing, the amount of the funds requested? Perhaps they can stretch their gift out over time. Just don't be pushy. Just learn from them and ask them, what could you do better for your next request? If it's a maybe, book a time to follow up after they have had some time to consider it a little bit more. If they offer a lower amount, you can either thank them for their generosity and accept the gift or ask if they'd prefer more time to think it over. And set a time to return for another visit. So regardless of their response, follow up within 24 hours with some form of thank you and a confirmation letter if they committed to an amount. I'm going to be doing another video soon on the art of stewardship and creative ways to thank donors. So again, be sure to subscribe. That was our suggestions for making the ask. If you found value, please be sure to click the like and the bell. Um, please shoot us a comment as well. Again, it really helps our channel reach those who need the help. Thank you and see you again next week. Mm -hmm.